cursed the times when he left her bed before dawn to go into the office to practice with his coach. But Mrs. Humphrey said she'll call you back at ten. Tell her I'll call her back. That said, Raymond swiveled again, rudely and unceremoniously dismissing his secretary. If you say so. Minerva drawled sarcastically. Get out, Minerva. The fastidiously dressed middle-aged woman with a flawless café au lait complexion and stylishly coiffed, chemically straightened hair turned on her heels and stomped out of the office of the man who in the past month had changed in front of her eyes like a snake shedding its skin. Even after a snake shed his skin for a new one, he'd still retain the behavior of a reptile. However, it wasn't the same with Raymond Humphreys. He may have looked the same, but Raymond had changed. Most of the time he was curt to the point of rudeness, short-tempered and exceedingly condescending. Perhaps, she mused, it was time to move on, to get another job. Affecting a professional smile, she walked into the reception area. Mr. Ennis, please follow me. She escorted the man into her boss's office. The first time she'd met the man, she'd stood several feet away from him, fearing he would smell. Yet upon closer inspection, she had discovered he was clean. It was just his scraggly beard, matted hair, and rumpled clothes that reminded her of the homeless man who sat on a wooden box outside a corner store near her subway station. Donald Ennis pulled back his shoulders in an attempt to appear taller than his five-six stature. Thank you, he mumbled, giving the uptight, prissy woman a sidelong glance. He knew she didn't like him, and the feeling was mutual. Each time he came to see Raymond Humphreys, she turned her nose up at him as if he were awful. What Minerva Jackson didn't know was his unkempt appearance was a foil, a carefully scripted persona for his profession. She didn't sign his checks, so he couldn't care less what she thought of him. Raymond was up on his feet, hand extended, when Donald walked into his office, closing the door softly behind him. Good morning, Ennis. He shook his hand, then indicated a chair at the conference table. Please, sit down. Donald sat while Raymond stood close by, no doubt watching for his reaction when he stared at the half-dozen black-and-white photographs, some shot with a long-range lens. What do you want? Do you know who he is? Raymond asked, answering the question with a question. Who doesn't? It was another question.